all motivation, whether it's worldly, you know, godly, is the same principles that God created, right? The, the things you set your mind on, the things that you dwell on is the person you become. You know, Christians will throw all that stuff out the window because it's been a, used in a secular way, right? Mm-hmm. If you think you'll just be rich, right? If you speak, speak it, you can have whatever you say, but right. it's actually God's principles misused. And when you use it in line with, with his word, And with, you know, like pursuing him, the combination is actually more powerful. Welcome to the Kindling Fire. My name is Troy Mangum. God is preaching a sermon to the world through people's lives. People's experience, history, and testimonies all point to some amazing attribute of God that you too can experience. I interview revolutionaries, fire starters, and troublemakers. This podcast is here to be a voice of encouragement in your life. A voice that says, with God you can, and with God you will step into the abundant life. So let's get rolling. Today on the Kindling Fire, I have a friend of mine uh, that we run together with at Vertical Life Church, and he's been a just a wonderful friend to have. His name is John Shafi'i. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Troy. I'm so glad to be here with you, and I'm excited to finally be able to share the mic with you. Well, one of the things that you are doing fairly actively that I'm benefiting greatly from is um, sort of a texting motivation uh, thing. And and we'll get into that, but just really quick, just to kind of give the listeners, uh, tease them a little bit. What what is it and what's it called (laughs) and where do you sign up? Every morning I send out, Monday through Friday, I've decided to take weekends off. I send out a less than 400 character, encouraging, motivating type of message. You can text 919-626-9786 and automatic messages will will prompt you to get signed up for that. It's free to everybody, whoever wants to use it. And it's something that encourages myself um, to sit down every morning. These aren't pre-planned. These aren't scheduled. Every morning I sit down at my desk, I write something, and uh, I send it out to the group that is subscribes to it. So I'm glad to hear that it inspires you, Troy. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a lot of wisdom in there. And uh, for the old time uh, Kindling Fire listeners, I used to do something called Fire Starters, and it's very similar to that. It's just very pithy. It's very powerful. And the the thing I love about it, John, is that it sounds like you sit down with the Lord and really kind of say, what would be a good thing to share today, right? I have to. Because, you know, we're going to get into what motivates me here today in our conversation. And you sometimes you have to stir yourself up in the Lord to find that. And when you know people in some way, there's accountability that people are expecting this text message almost every morning because I've been pretty consistent with it. So there's a little bit of accountability there that holds me to write this message, ask the Lord, you know, search my heart to see, you know, what encouragement can I spit out? Because like we all know, you, you don't feel that every single morning. That's the truth. So one more time, what's the phone number to sign up? 919-626-9786. You can text your name to that number and you'll and receive the prompts to, to get enrolled if, if you're interested in receiving those messages. So one of the things I love about it is that you end it with win the day. And the thing that I know about you from our friendship is you are a motivated man. You, you've got, um, you've got, you just are motivated and, and, and I want to be motivated, but I find that life can get in the way. And anytime I find people that are really hacking that ability to, to, to overcome discouragement, overcome setbacks, overcome unexpected things and try to stay in that mental space of, of staying motivated, staying uh, optimistic, uh, staying um, what I call a growth mindset, which is it's still, there's still hope. There's still possibilities. There's still another opportunity. If, if I believe in God, these things to be true and you're that guy. And so I wanted to talk to you about how, how, how did you get here? Like, how did you become a guy that really wants to, to do this in the world? So yeah, any, and, and, as a part of that as well, maybe tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do. 
Yeah, so let's let's go back to the beginning. I am a regular guy just like everybody else, right? I mean, God gives us all gifts and talents, but sometimes people think I'm different. Like, I'm not any different. Like, I deal with discouragement. I deal with defeated thoughts. I deal with um, struggling to, to want to continue. I deal with, you know, searching the world to, to find my hope. And, and I lived in a, a life to, to search the world. However, when my, when my mom said when I was a kid, if I went to bed with something on my mind, when I woke up, I got right to it. Like I, I didn't, didn't forget that. And maybe that's how God wired me. Maybe that, that's how he made me. If I put my mind to something, I usually see it all the way through. That, that's just kind of maybe a, a character trait of me. Even when I was worldly, even before I was really following Jesus, like if I, I wanted to go a direction, I just went that direction. Mm-hmm. And um, everybody's different, you know, and, and we have fears that, that jump in our way and stop us from those things. Um, but when I want to do something, I go after it. To yeah. get me to want to do something is the challenge, right? Like I have to, I have to overcome that to set my mind on it, to want to go that far. But once I get to that point, I'm all in. And uh, it might make sense to the listeners here. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I own a kickboxing gym, so I'm in fitness. I also do business coaching. I like speaking, public speaking, motivational speaking. Um, I I like to help people and and change their lives because um, I've just seen what God's done in my life and what his ability is in the lives of other people. And if I could be a vessel for some of that, you know, like glory to him on the highest for, for using me to make a difference in, in the lives of other people. Um, But if people don't usually believe me before I did the whole entrepreneur thing, uh, going back to me setting my mind on things, I was an auto mechanic out of high school. I skipped four year college I went to a vocational technical school. I learned about fixing cars. I was a teenager that was inspired by the movie, The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> However embarrassing it is to say that, you know, on, on the public world, you know, like I saw that movie when I was a teenager and I was like, I want to do that. I want to go fast and I want to make cars go fast. Yeah. And because I set my mind on something, that's what I went after. So I went to uh, automotive school. I became a, a mechanic and I got caught in this world, which wasn't as glorious as I thought it was, but I always wanted to own my own business. And I, I was always uh, enchanted by the entrepreneur life. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was because I had some cousins down in Florida and they, they were in, in business world. Or when I saw business people, there was something attractive about that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know what, like going here, doing this, making calls, you know, I, being that guy, that's what I was attracted to. And I tried to start my own uh, shop, automotive shop. It just made the most sense for me. And that was, it's tied into my testimony because that was around the time that I really started, you know, seeking the Lord more. My mom raised me to know the foundations of, of what the Christian faith was about, but I, I didn't make it my own and follow it for myself until I was like uh, the prodigal son Right. That's the best way to put it. What motivated him to go home was his stomach was hungry. You know, he was starving in the pigsty. And he said, my father's servants eat better than this. Let me go be a servant in my father's house. I don't even need to be a son. You know, and in a way I was motivated to say, God, I know you're a God. My mom taught me about you. I know you know everything. However, I need to know the things that are going to make me successful in business. And you're the guy to talk to. And because I started that conversation with him, you know, in, in his loving way of, of bringing us in and bringing us back to the family, he closed the door on the shop thing for me. I started uh, pursuing different franchises and ran across the one that I'm in, you know, just happened to be a great fit for me. And little did I know that what God had for me in that next season of life um, was to take me on a, on a roller coaster ride with him and learn more about who I am in Christ. So that's a little bit about me. And yeah, let me I- just ask you this question, because it, 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 I've, I've had other entrepreneurs on, and this is the question. Do you believe that God put that desire in you for entrepreneurship? Or do you believe that, oh, no, it's just, I'm just ambitious and I want to be super successful or somewhere in between? 
I've, I've wrestled back and forth with that because my initial desire to pursue or pursue entrepreneurship was based on uh, selfish gain. Right. Right. So uh, there was that wrestling of like, well, is this really of God or did I just carve my own path out in life because that's where I wanted to go? Um, however, at, at this point in my life, looking back and looking at how God has revealed things to me about who I am and the gifts and talents that, that he's given me, um, like one of them being my voice. I have a unique voice. I have a, a powerful voice. I like speaking in, in public. I never used to like these things. And God's, God's shown me that he actually did create me in this way to be a, a person, you know, for his kingdom to use the gifts and talents. And being an entrepreneur means helping other people, right? It doesn't mean helping oneself. So once I, I redefined that definition, I saw God did create me to create. God created me to create jobs, to create opportunities, to, um, to make a way, you know, to carry the burden because it, it is a burden to carry when sometimes you have more responsibility on your shoulders. I yeah. love responsibility. I don't know why I love responsibility. When I was a kid, I was like ready to pay my own bills. I was like, <laughs> I, I want to do it myself. Like, I don't, I don't want anybody's help with it. And I carry a lot of responsibility because you carry the weight of uh, managing other people's livelihood, um, leading organizations, leading people, developing things well so that other people are successful in their lives and, and what they're coming to you for. Um, so I, I fully believe that it's what God called me to. And doesn't mean that I would never have a job. It doesn't mean that I would never be in a different place in my life. But for this season of life, I, I feel like I'm, I'm right where he wanted me to be. Yeah, that's such a, that's, man, that's a great testimony. It's a great place to arrive in life to, to have peace with that. I, I think that um, I would just say that, do you, do you think that you've gotten to the point you're at now through God purifying you a little bit? Um, is that like, it sounds like with the failed business, that might've been a tough one or, or other kind of purification. Cause the reason I say that is that sometimes God has put seeds of greatness in us and and there it's very easy to kind of take that as a sort of self down the selfish gain path and and god can purify it and say no that seed of greatness is actually it looks like this in its purest form um and i have been um guilty of kind of having God something deposited in me and then kind of trashing it and throwing it in the trash. Cause it's like, Oh, it's all selfishness. It's all just selfish ambition. It's just, my motives are all screwed up, never valuing the thing that God had given me the ability to do. And all I needed was purification, but I wasn't allowing God to purify it. I just was tossing it, throwing it away. And then I was wandering in the wilderness, not knowing what the hell I was doing. So th that scenario, does that, resonate with you do you understand what i'm saying i mean it's exactly what god is doing and has done in my life hmm. you know like he has to purify the the things of our our hearts to make them holy for his service hmm. in, in my opinion i mean so he's taken me through a process and he has to sometimes uh make sure that I, i'm in a humble position before i can be used you know, and, and it's okay. And it hurts, right? I mean, it hurts when we, when we go down the wrong path, or even something that we know is, is from God, and we just don't have the right heart in it. And it, it takes longer, you know, one key theme in my life for this season of entrepreneurship, which is over eight years now, is patience, hmm. is wait on him, wait, Wait on the Lord and in his timing, because man, I'm ready to go. Like I'm ready to switch up gears. Like God, you just tell me. I mean, one of the things I've been asking the Lord for a long, long time is like, give me the vision, give me the thing, you know, so I can just shoot down that path. Like I said, I, I set my mind on something and, and I'm all in. And like, I, I want to know, like, am I going to be a gym owner forever? Probably not. Right. Am I going to like, am I going to be a motivational speaker? Am I going to be a business coach? Like, what is the Lord? What is the Lord? So I can just like go. And uh, recently what he's been revealing is like, you know, if I, if I show you those things, you're going to put those things above me. Mm. Why don't you keep your eyes on me and 
I'll take you down the process, right? So the patience is a is a key goal, and it's, sometimes it's easy that to to get like your motives wrapped up with your gifts and throw it all out instead of letting God separate the two because the separation process is sometimes more painful, um, sometimes takes longer than we want to wait. Yeah. And in the end, you know, like we live in a culture and a world where it's like, I need it now. I need it today. You know, if my internet connection is not fast enough, I'm upset. Yeah. But I, if you get stuck behind a slow driver, at least I do, I'm like, come on, man. You know, like, what are you doing? Like, so, so let me, yeah. So man, you and I are so alike in this. So, um, so Jesus said something super interesting, I think to his brothers, or his disciples, one of the two, and he basically said, for you, and he was, they were basically challenging him saying, hey, you want to be this figure, go and make it happen. You want to be this figure, why do you hide? Why don't you go into the public and do this thing and say, hey, I'm Jesus, and this is what I'm about. And he said to them, my time has not yet come. For you, any time is right. It's the most powerful statement Jesus said. It's like, for you, in your world, now is always the time. Any time is right for you, but my time has not yet come. And he was aware of timing. He was aware of God's timing. Mm -hmm. And I am a now guy. I'm a man. If there's no better uh, time than now, I want to do it now. I want to see it now. I don't want to wait. I don't, I, I, I love running as fast as I possibly can to the goal. Uh, not meandering, not wandering, not being patient, none of that. But that being said, um, and I've lived a little bit more years than you, is that the encouragement uh, that I would give to the listeners is effectively this. If you're wired that way to run fast and to achieve things quickly, um, there will be a then suddenly in the Lord. And it will be like, he'll say, it's go time. And, and prior to that is training, preparation, working on your stride you know all these things aren't that aren't full-on going after the goal but it's all preparation for when it's go time you are absolutely prepared and you will you'll hit the mark and you'll hit it quickly um but that's that that's a that's a training in the lord right you know because it's if yeah. you're hard that way you just it's like come on god let's go why am i waiting on you why are we waiting at all why why yeah. why is there any you know and the lord's like wait on me you know and i'm like okay <laughs> yeah that's, that's so good and you actually told me that similar thing which has been a, a helpful mindset shift on the rooftop there in downtown raleigh when we yeah when we had coffee that morning about you know just see it all as as training Yep. see it all as training and you know motivation for the listeners is what i do when i'm struggling you know when i'm really unsure in those moments of waiting and, and patience and can't see what i, I want to see or things don't go the way I, I want them to go i just remind myself like i'm on this adventure with the lord I, i'm on this adventure with god i'm, I'm in in the training i'm, I'm in the, the camp i love david from the Bible, mm -hmm. King David. I mean, if there's been one person that I probably spent more time reading about than Jesus, it's him. Like I've, I've read it over and over again. Like I, I love his, his story and just seeing how long he waited. Yeah. You know, God made him anointed him and, and there was a promise given to him when he was just a teenager. Right. And it was, I mean, well, I don't know, whatever their calculations are 13 years. I mean, I don't know how they always calculate this that, yeah. around that time frame before he ever was exalted. And there was a really rough time when the, the own King was after him to kill him. Right. And it's easy to read and, and flip through the pages. And I love, and I'm thankful for uh, Bible teachers and pastors that really helped me slow down and say, look, you can just flip the page and read the next part of his story. And it's easy to skip over that. But like, if you just think about, what it's like to be on the run from your own people, uh, you know, hiding in the wilderness, hiding in the caves, hiding away from the king who can just kill you at any moment. Like, what, what would that actually be like? Would that be like what you're feeling right now? You know, and, and David was willing to wait and say, you know, I'm not going to kill Saul now. I'm going to wait till God's timing yeah. when he had the opportunity to, to, to do it, right? Like, 
man, that's the heart that I want because God said he was a man after his own heart. And that's always been uh, a prayer of, of mine. Like, how do I become a, a man after God's own heart? And patience is, I think, <laughs> is oh, yeah. the key for us fast runners. Like patience, yeah. patience, patience. Yeah, and I, think, I love to hate. Yeah, and <laughs> the word I love to hate, that's so good. So the one thing that, um, that I... Uh, there's this powerful quote by Dallas Willard. Uh, it's honestly the only thing I think I know from Dallas Willard. So I don't read his books. I don't, read, I don't listen to him on YouTube. Like I'm not a Dallas Willard. You know, if you know the guy's kind of a philosopher, Christian philosopher out of UCLA. And he made this statement. It says, what is the one thing God's up to? It's entrusting his power to men. Mm-hmm. And, and history is filled with people that have been entrusted with power, um, but have misused it. And, and so it's sort of like he was saying the mission of God is to make us trustworthy to be entrusted with power or influence or whatever he wants to give. And it's this training and mission of entrustment. And David was very much that. So it was a training in entrustment and purifying his heart, his motives, so that when it was entrusted, the benefit would be for all. And... Um, And that's that. um, Yeah. So anyway, so so I think that staying in a position where in in a mindset that says God is preparing to trust me with great things. I think that that's probably a good mindset to have. Now, Mm -hmm. God, show me how you how I'm being prepared today, because I know ultimately you're going to entrust me with something. You know, and now he's entrusted you with a baby, right? Now you're dad, like a huge entrustment, you know, and other things like that. So does that make sense to you? Does that resonate with you? 100%. I mean, God gives us a a certain vision through his word and um, the reprogramming of your mind and re-centering what you're putting your trust in, what you're putting your, your future hope in actually gives you the ability to stay with it when times aren't as well as you want them to be right. Mm-hmm. Or when things don't go the way we want them to go, our mindset being that God's training me, God's purifying me, God's using me for his glory. God's not into the business of a dead bones. You know, he's in the business of resurrection. You know, God's not in the business of graves. He's in the business of new life. Mm-hmm. Right. And knowing those truths about who God is, And remembering that will help pick yourself back up um, when you when you're feeling low, you know, being a motivational guy, Troy, I spent time listening to motivational speakers. Right. And there's all these motivational people out in the world. And I really struggled back and forth with like, what are they teaching me versus what is what is God saying to me? Mm -hmm. And what I really learned is all motivation, whether it's worldly you know, godly is the same principles that God created, right? The, the things you set your mind on, the things that you dwell on is the person you become. The way that you use your words is the, the fruit that you're going to eat, whether to death or to life. And sometimes, you know, Christians will throw all that stuff out the window because it's been a, used in a secular way, right? Yeah. If you think you'll just be rich, right? If you speak, speak it, you can have whatever you say. Right. right. And it's like this name it, claim it. And everybody's like, throw that out the window because that is not biblical, but right. it's actually God's principles misused. That's right. A, and that is powerful. That's God's principles misused. And when you use it in line with, with his word and with, you know, like pursuing him, the combination is actually more powerful. Right. You know, like the, most wealthy people in the world, most famous people in the world, they commit suicide. Obviously, they're not happy. Right. Right. Obviously, they're unfulfilled. Right. So those things don't satisfy. I mean, reading Ecclesiastes will tell you that it's all vanity. Right. Throwing chaff to the wind, you know, chasing after these things that the world tells us are good. And we've all done it. Right. We've all we're all guilty of I am, you know, like chasing right. after things, you know, women, money, whatever, fame, you, you chase after something that's empty. But, you know, we're, then we have a tendency to throw out the, the truths that are in God's word. Like, you know, what are you, what are you thinking about? What are you putting your, your heart on? 
And I think that's what we've been talking about here today is like, set your mind on what God's doing. You know, one of the hardest things that I ever had to realize, and I tell myself this probably multiple times a day, every day, is life is not easy. Life was never meant to be a cakewalk. Right. God never promised that. God never, God never promised a life of comfort and ease and just sipping margaritas on the beach. Sure, right. right. I mean, he never gave us that promise. And somehow I've, you know, twisted my mind into thinking like that's a promise from the Bible. That if I believe in Jesus, that my walk is going to be easy. He's just going to fix my problems. He's just going to drop dimes in the bucket when I need it. Instead of realizing that, no, life isn't easy, but, but following Jesus and chasing after what he has for you is the most fulfilling. Yeah, I mean, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Like, we like to skip over that verse. Yeah, but but he says, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world, i.e. you in me have overcome it. Which means we can actually have cheer in the moments of yep. trouble. You know, and when I was struggling, um, when I started this uh, fitness business, it was like, going downhill fast you know the money was burning <laughs> and the people weren't signing up and i was really uh anxious and sick to my stomach honestly to the point where i would throw up a stomach vial in the morning because i was so worried about all this stuff that i couldn't control and i just wish god would just take it away and yeah. i would read paul and Romans saying like i rejoice in my tribulation i'm like what's wrong with this guy man like <laughs> god I, I really i don't understand <laughs> You know, at one point I compared myself to the uh, Israelites coming out of Egypt, you know, like eating the bread in the wilderness. I was like, I would rather be there right now, you know, <laughs> than in this position where my world's crumbling. Like, at least they had the cloud and the fire, you know, like they could see God, right? Whatever. what you wish for. Right. And I'm like, wait, they didn't have any air conditioning. I love my AC. Um, you know, and it, anyways, it's just like. You know, God, God kind of, to your point, purifies our hearts and our motives and sometimes taking us through those places um, is what we need. You know, but, it's, it's but what you we, survived. We Look, here you are now. You still have the here business I am now. years later. Is that the still same? have the same business. Same, ha, that one hasn't failed me yet. And it's, I mean, being in the gym business, COVID was a whole nother thing, right? I mean, sure. everybody fled the gyms as fast as possible. But here, here I still am. And even if the business wasn't still successful or still in business, I would still be here. Amen. I Pretty would good. still be, you know, <laughs> until I'm not here anymore, right? Like I'm, I'm still here. I'm still moving and I am actually have, uh, you know, more scars that I can continue to move, move forward with. And, you know, staying motivated in today's world because, in the news, depression, anxiety, all these things are like on the rise, like, like crazy. And I just think to those basic motivational principles that God tells us, you know, from the Bible, like, what are you setting your heart on? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I run across people that used to be me, which I was setting my heart on an easy life that would serve me that doesn't exist. Right. Oh, and if, if I'm ever struggling with uh feeling encouraged and wanting to put my next foot forward which happens all the time like all i do is i remind myself well i'm not chasing an easy life that's self-serving and you know it's going to just go the way i want it every step of the way like i'm, I'm actually chasing god and he tells me there's going to be trouble he tells me there's going to be bumps i still live in a, a broken world which means people are going to hurt me and i'm going to hurt others and you got to do messy forgiveness and you have to you have to push yourself into uncomfortable situations i don't want to do any of that but because my my mind from a uh philosophical standpoint is not looking for easy anymore the tendency to go back is, is there but I've, I've i've kind of learned that correct that because it's, it's what god tells me and even in business coaching, I always ask people, like, what their philosophy is. Like, what are you up to? 
Like what's, what's the point of your business? And to make money isn't, isn't the answer. Like you have to really have a, a service underneath what you're doing, like how you change in somebody's life, how you help and change your employee's life or the people that, that work with you, your, your vendors and, and those things. And, you know, actually those kind of conversations open up the door for the gospel. That's exciting. Because they're like, who is this guy? What is he talking about? And I'm like, well, <laughs> let me tell you, you know, you're messing them up. <laughs> Jesus, man. Hey, so, so John, how could people find out more about, obviously we've talked about your, your motivational text. Is there a place or a website they can go to kind of hear a little bit more about you if they were interested in, in having you, you know, speak or anything like that? I have a speaking website and it's shafii.com. My last name, S H A F E E I. You can check me out there. Instagram that at the real shafii, um, trying to be more active on, on the social networks and, and those kind of things. Motivational text is a, is a great place. And it's actually a two way street. If you respond back, it actually comes directly to me and I can engage with you on that platform. So text 919-626-9786 and you can sign up for free daily motivational messages. Thank you so much, Troy, for um, giving me an opportunity to, to share this platform with you. And I hope everybody that tunes in and listens today found some encouragement from my my woes and trials and um, <laughs> how I keep moving forward. But uh, you do keep moving forward and you do it well. Uh, I mean, as being a, as somebody that Look, you know, the word of God, people speaking life into you, we all need encouragement. I mean, that's why people tune into this podcast and other things is like, I just need encouragement. I need something. I need, like, I need, I need a jolt today. And, um, and I would say you need to get around John Shafi'i because he is that jolt. And I pray that God blesses everything you put your hands to, man. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely needed in the world. Thank you, John, for coming on. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. Hey, if you did like it, it would be really helpful if you want to send us a review over on iTunes. That would be really cool. And if you want to connect, go over to Instagram, search Troy Mangum or The Kindling Fire, and we can connect there, and that would be a great way to kind of stay in touch. I am doing a YouTube channel, so we do video formats of these podcasts, and we'd love to have you look there. Okay, guys, until next time, be awesome.